Hello, hello, you guys. Happy Tuesday. Um, I feel kind of fly today. Like the outfit that I have on is is like kind of like a business drip. I don't know. I think I think I look a little fly today. I think the podcast fits are like kind of hitting recently because I'm actually dressing up on camera now. Like I was just kind of throwing on sweats, and then I was like, you know what? Like, why don't I just put it on because I could put it on anyways <laughs> hi you guys I hope you've had an amazing past two weeks it's so weird that I do this bi-weekly and it does not feel like I do it bi-weekly whatsoever it feels like I do it every week because time just goes by like that but um I hope you guys have had an amazing past two weeks uh I had a week that was full of freaking sickness so if I sound stuffy and if I'm breathing loud <laughs> And just kind of um, am not delivering the best. That is why. Uh, I don't know what got me a death wish or something. Because uh, this past week, I was sick, sick, sick. Probably the sickest I've ever been. Um, did I hate it? Yes. Is it done with? Yeah, we're recovering. So uh, I'm talking a lot. Welcome to Save Not Soft. I am Emmy Moore, the host, the beautiful, wonderful host. And thank you guys for clicking and joining. If this is your first time, hi, welcome. Um, I'm so excited that you are here. Uh, this is a Christian podcast where we talk about all things Jesus, growing your relationship with God, and what it's like to navigate the Christian lifestyle. It's called Save Not Soft for a reason. This thing is hard. It's not easy. It's not, you know, just a little stroll in the park. This is something that comes with, you know, wrong turns in <laughs> like bushes you fall into with thorns in them. And then also some days where it's happy sunshine rainbows and playgrounds and other days where it's just stormy and I don't know what to do with I'm I, I don't know where to go. And um yeah, so I'm happy you guys are here today. We're going to be talking about uh, drawing strength in your times of weakness. And I feel like this is a message that can apply to any and everybody because everybody has a weakness. Um, even like in movies, if you think about it, like Superman, what what's his uh, kryptonite? That's his weakness. Every, every villain, every superhero, everyone has a weakness. And um, God wanted me to reveal that we must decrease so he can increase. And that's pretty much what today's message is about. I'm so excited. The Lord's going to speak. I'm just going to let him take over. Um, I'm going to pray real quick, and then we'll just get into what God wants to say today. So if you guys want to bow your heads with me, uh, Lord, we invite you into the space, God. I invite you into my little room with me. I invite you um, to the other person's room or gym or car, wherever they may be. Uh, Lord, we just uh, want to extend out to you an invitation to come to where we are so you could just minister to us and teach us and um, so you could show us what your power and your strength looks like, God. And I pray today that you reveal our weakness. Uh, Lord, I pray that you use me as a vessel. I pray that Everything that comes from my mouth is from you. It's not from me. Uh, it's not my knowledge, but it's yours, God. Uh, I just pray that what what needs to be said will be said, and your will will be done in this, um, no matter what it looks like, God. So we just have faith in you. We trust you, and we're so excited um, about what you have to say. So thank you, God, for using this platform, for using me, um, and for the other person on the other side of the screen. Uh, meet their needs, God. Um, we love you so much. Thank you for being here. In Jesus' name, we pray amen so like how i said this past week i was really sick and god is so timely and intentional because i was y'all i was weak <laughs> like i it was funny because i i planned on talking about this whole message before i got sick i i already knew i was going to talk about this and then God was like, okay, you, you want to know what you're talking about? I'll give you a, a real example, okay? <laughs> and so I got sick, and it wasn't like a little cold or just something um, to where I felt like I could be good on my own. I needed a lot of assistance. I, I, was, I was down bad. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. Um, and God taught me a lot through the experience I just had, kid you not, this past week, um, from being sick. 
and I, I, I'll basically, I don't, I don't know what I had. Uh, I don't, I don't need to know. It's just the lesson I got out of it was amazing. But on Tuesday, um, I woke up, everything was fine. I thought I was chilling the night before I went to a worship night. So my, so my throat was a little inflamed, but I thought it was because I was singing and dancing and yelling and screaming and stuff. Um, so I thought my throat was sore because of that. But after I went to my Pilates class or in the midst of it, I started to feel like I couldn't do some of the stuff I was doing. Basic stuff, like basic movements. I, I couldn't do it. Like a little plank that I could hit every day. Like I, w- I was wobbly. I was shaking. I was like, why does it feel so heavy today? And my instructor, my instructor was like, this is the same weight you always have it at. And I'm like, oh, you know, is something wrong with a girl? <laughs> and so the rest of the workout, I was like, oh, why I feel like this? And after Pilates, I work out right after because my Pilates class is connected to my gym. So I work out my Pilates class, then I go to lift and I'm at the uh, barbell station and I'm about to do these deadlifts and these things are going up like nails on a chalkboard, just not smooth. And it, like I felt fatigues my muscles hurt and I was just like uh okay what's going on so I I try to push through and I was like no I gotta listen to my body right and so I come home I do some work uh I had lunch with my friend and I had to do some brand stuff um for social media so I went out to lunch it still wasn't like my appetite was there but like still just like sleepy I was fatigued my muscles hurt um, shot some things for a brand, made a video, um, took some pictures, came back home, knocks, sleep, like drool coming out the side of my mouth, slumped. And I was probably out for like three hours straight, just knocked. And I woke up. Has that ever happened? Like when you go to sleep and then you wake up and suddenly you're just immensely sick. That's exactly what happened to me. I took this three hour nap and I woke up just death. Like, I, my mouth was freaking dry. The back of my throat was just massively inflamed. Um, my head hurt. I was fatigued. I felt like I could even like sit up correctly. If I moved too fast, I felt like I was going to faint. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cause I hate being sick. It's a big pet peeve of mine. It's actually, I get angry when I'm sick because it, it limits me to do what I, for me to do what I need to do. Does that make sense? Like I, I, I'm too busy to be sick. <laughs> like I got too much going on to be sick. Um, and just being sick is irritating. It, it, it just, it just makes me mad. Um, so I woke up sick, irritated and just kind of like, okay, it is what it is. And so I popped like a day quill and I was laying down and just like was on my phone falling in and I was asleep and I just felt terrible. Um, and so I ended up going to sleep around like I don't know, like 9.30, I wake up at 11, like, alarmed. I wake up hot, sweating profusely, and, like, hyperventilating because of how hot I was. Like, I, I was laying down on my bed. My my back is against the bed, and uh, so, so I'm facing up, and I'm laying on my back, and I'm breathing, like... <gasps> because I'm so hot and I I fell asleep in like a hoodie and like sweats I mean because it's still winter time and I had my blankets on top of me and how I slept was like if you're watching on YouTube you can see me I was like this and my phone was in my hands uh, in my right hand how to get there I don't know and I couldn't even lift my right hand this is how weak I felt because my phone was on top of it. It felt like there was like a 60, 50, 60 pound dumbbell on my hand and I couldn't even lift my hand. That's that's how sick and weak my body was. And so I'm sitting there hyperventilating like, <gasps> like hot. I can't even move. I can't even take my clothes off because it's hot. I can't even move the blankets. I, I literally am stuck because I the fever was just going through the roof. I, I was just, I wasn't scared. I knew I was fine. Um, I I just knew I needed help. (laughs) I just knew I needed attention, right? And so um, the only thing I thought to do was to hold down my phone 
and to and to call someone you know because i'm hyperven- hyperventilating on my bed um and sweating profusely can't move kind of triggering so i hold down the side of my phone i'm just like Is there-? like can barely speak because again my tonsils are just like touching each other basically <laughs> and um end result end up calling my best friend annika which lives like a few blocks away from me and instantly she knew something was wrong and she was like do you need me and i was like yeah yeah i need you right <laughs> so um she came over and when i tell you this girl was here within like 10 minutes with like duffel bags full of stuff to take care of me because one thing about annika she knows how to how to take care of care of a person and i'm so blessed she's my best friend because she's really the only one who's really taking care of me like how she does so um I mean, y'all, Annika had to, like, <laughs> she had to, like, change my clothes for me. You know how, how much that sucks as a 21-year-old woman? I can't change my own clothes. I could barely move. Like, she had to, like, change my clothes for me, like, move me, pick me up. Uh, anyways, like, she was doing stuff that I regularly do. Like, she was doing it for me. Um, fast forward, uh, so I pretty much, like, had a fever all night just trying to break that, uh, tossing and turning, throwing up a lot, um, throat was hurting, anything I was, like, trying to eat, like, it hurt, and it felt like it was being rejected, um, so, yeah, I I was sick, 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 y'all, um, and when Annika was taking care of me, you know, it, a part of me got annoyed, (laughs) which, like, you guys are probably, like, you know, why would you be annoyed by someone taking care of you, and it's because I have this ideology, had this ideology in my mind that, you know, I got everything under control, you know, I'm strong, I could push through this, but in my weakness, when I can't even walk or move or talk or drink a sip of water, I had to be in a posture to let someone else show their strength because of my weakness. And God said, this is exactly what I want to do in your weakness. And I was like, oh, I mean, God, you didn't have to, you know, give me a like a physical analogy. But I mean, I guess we're here. But he told me, he said, Emmy, like, I want you to understand how my strength works, works, how whenever you're weak, it, you are giving me a platform for me to be strong. In your weakness, you are giving God a platform to show who God is. You're letting God be God. And when I was weak and when I was tired and when I couldn't even change my own clothes, I started to thank God and I started to worship him because once he revealed that to me, I said, Lord, I thank you for this actually because this is just giving you exposure for you to work on me, to move in me, to show who you are. So I thank you that you are using me to show who you are. And I I started to look at like situations where I know I'm intentionally weak and how I allow God to be my strength and how sometimes I don't allow God to be my strength, how I think I'm my my own strength. When in all actuality, my strength draws from the Lord. And um, the the whole thing of me being being sick, like it, it was just all one big analogy. And I think uh, I've, I've been going through some stuff recently that, you know, obviously y'all can only know so much, but God really spoke um through this hardship I just had because it kind of just knocked down a lot of my pride no knowing where my strength came from because it's not even mine right I must decrease so he can increase that's what John 3 30 is is I need to put myself in a decreased position so he can increase in every single area of my life because a lot of us think that okay if if I if I want to bless my work, I gotta increase my work. I gotta increase my my I don't I don't know what it is in your life, but we always think that we gotta do better and we gotta do this and and I gotta find the strength in myself when in all actuality it all draws from God. Am I telling you 
to be lazy and to not do anything and to just wait for something to fall into your lap. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I think when things are given to us time after time after time, we could be prideful and think that these things were given from ourselves and lose the credibility that God deserves. So when we put ourselves in a humble position to go before the Lord and say, okay, God, I'm going to intentionally decrease myself before you so you could put an increase into my life. So you could show who you are. So you could perform the miracle. So you could bless my job. So you could bless my work. So you could bless my family, my friends, my relationship, whatever it may be. It's I'm, I'm positioning myself intentionally to give you the platform, the exposure to shine. And in doing that, I know that you're going to bless my life intentionally. So I started to read uh, the the first verse that came to my mind was 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 9 through 10. And it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Like, isn't that funny? For my power is made in weakness. For, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Perfect. So to expect perfect, perfect power, you have to be in a position of weakness. That's where God really shines. And I don't know. I, I don't know what your guys' weakness is. This is kind of like a broad message because everyone's weakness looks different. This might be something physical. I don't know if you're terminally ill, if you have a chronic disease, if you have, I don't know why PCOS came, came to the top of my head. If you have women, if you have something going on like medically that is chronic, that is consistent, I don't know if it's something physical. I don't know if it's something mental. I don't know if you guys are dealing with anxiety, if it's depression, if it's being bipolar, um, having OCD, any of those things. Um, and I don't know if it's like emotional or spiritual. I don't know if you're d dealing with lust. I don't know if you're dealing with um, greed or anger or stealing things or hanging out with a boy you should not be hanging out with. I, I don't know what your weakness is. I th This is your job where... You got to let God come into our conversation right now and say, God, I need you to address to me my weakness right now. So you can kind of speak to that area. But whatever your weakness is, y'all, think of it. Um, and I have no idea what it is, but what what I believe that God is telling me to tell you guys is we need to confront our weakness before it confronts us. Because your weakness can be weaponized completely. Your weakness can be used to stall, to procrastinate, to stab you in your own back. Your weakness can bite you in the back and cause negative effects on your life when in all actuality, your weakness should be used as a tool to let God shine, to give God the platform to show who he is. And I, and I think as to why we are so afraid to confront our weakness is because we have a fear of self-awareness. Like once we kind of know too much about ourselves, it's like, <laughs> like there's, there's kind of some things we put in a box and lock it and just throw it into the sea when we need to be aware of these things because it's going to come back. And it's like all that builds up for what? It's like you're putting a napkin over a bowling ball. You can't, you just can't cover a bowling ball with a napkin, you know? It's it, it's going to come back. It's going to hit you. And we need to confront our weakness before it confronts us. Because if we don't, then it's going to come in places of, like I said, laziness, procrastination, temptation. And... I, like I said, I don't know what your weakness is. So um, j just kind of pray about that right now. Like if you haven't had time already, just say, Lord, like I invite you into my place of, le of not leakness. I invite you in my place of weakness. And I also want to ask you, God, to give identity to what my weakness is. 
whether if it's small or big, whatever it may be, if it's the most important thing in your life or whatever you're struggling with, like that's what God wants to highlight in this podcast. That's what God wants to highlight in this conversation. And this is what he wants to speak into because one thing he told me is he said, Emmy, this applies to anyone, everyone. This even applies to me. Like y'all, I preach to myself whenever I make these episodes. Like I, like kind of speaking on the topic of weakness, we are all falling short. Yes, I teach. Yes, I preach. So I'm held to a higher standard, but I'm no different than you on the other, on the other side of the screen. I'm no different. We're on the same rodeo. (laughs) We are in the same place. I'm no better than you. I'm no worse than you. We are the same. We are equals. And every time a word comes out of my mouth, like this isn't my ideology. This is God's words. And I I just put myself in a position of obedience to say yes to him. So, um, yeah, I, I have weaknesses myself. Um, I've had some things I've conquered. I've had some things, um, that, you know, I've confronted my weakness. So it was no longer a tactic that was used to drag me down. For example, I would like to say anxiety was one of them. Um, anxiety was a weakness of mine that was weaponized to tear me down rather than for God to show who he is. Um, for an example, when I used to get anxiety attacks, I would allow the anxiety attack to corrupt whatever I was doing, whoever I was talking to, whatever I was pouring into. I would allow anxiety to corrupt that. But whenever I started to notice my weakness when it came to anxiety, I then, whenever uh, a temptation of anxiety were, were to come up, I would then take that temptation, give it to God. And, you know, it's not me that stops the panic attack. It's him. Because he comes in and he speaks love over me. He speaks peace over me. He speaks authority over me. You think I can do that? Why do you think I'm the weak one and he's the strong one? I'm only strong because he is strong and because he dwells in me. You know, so just know that your your strength is drawn from the Lord. And also, side note, if this podcast kind of cuts in and out, it's because I got to demucus myself. So I apologize in advance. But. Um, I kind of want to talk about two stories today. First one being the story of Job and why it's so profound. And we kind of noticed this in the first chapter about how, if if you don't know the story of Job, I'll just kind of chop it up real quick. Basically, the devil went before the Lord and was like, hey, I see the servant, um, this man of yours, this child of yours. And, you know, I don't think he's really faithful to you um, because he has A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You provided all this for him. Um, I bet if I were to take it all away from him, he wouldn't worship you. And God's like, okay, then try him because God knows, you know. Job not gonna not gonna fail him right and so um the devil goes down to earth starts like basically murdered Job's whole family took away his whole business like basically did everything besides kill him so gave him uh the worst life in about a day and the first thing that we see Job do is shave his head go to the ground and worship God and to some of you guys that might be a little odd as to, you know, why is that? And I kind of want to read exactly what he did. Job 120. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship. 95% of my audience on, on podcasts, like y'all listening is women. How many of you (laughs) would tear your fashion over, get to get to your knees And shave your head. (laughs) Let's be so for real. How many of y'all would do that? Like whenever everything is stripped away from you, you tear off your clothes, you go to the ground, you shave your head and you worship God. How many of us really do that in our times of weakness? I told you earlier how whenever I was sick, when the Lord showed me the, the beauty of my weakness, I started to worship him because I... Because I told him, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to see you be you because I am weak. And because you want to exemplify your strength to me, I thank you for putting me in a position to receive a miracle from you, right? So how many of us go through trials, tribulations, a breakup, a divorce, uh, I don't know, you failed something, how, how many of us go 
through something traumatic and we fall to the floor and praise God. I would like to say if you're answering that that question, uh, you know, off the top of your head and truly, it's very little of us. And quite honestly, probably none. The first thing we go to is, oh my gosh, well, how do I fix it? Well, what do I do about this? Everything's, everything's taken away from me. What do I do? We, we try to draw strength from the wrong places, right? It's like, I, there's been so many situations I've been in to where it's like, what, what do I do? Because why? It's out of our control. This is why we can't have strength is because we don't have control. God has the ultimate strength because he has control. So when we are when we get out of situations that were traumatic and terrible and just hurt our feelings and we become weak, we try drawing strength out of ourselves, out of other people, out of things, out of drugs, out of people, out of movies, out of sleeping with someone, out of I don't know what it is, y'all, but we try drawing strength from the wrong places that can't be controlled. Because when we're weak, and there's nothing we could do about it. We just try to go to all these different things. But we see that Job went to the floor and worshiped God because he knew that God is the one who is ultimately in control. And he knows that God is the one who has the true strength. So he didn't go to any other resource except for him. He didn't go to any other person, to his business, to his work to his to his wife to his kid like whatever it may be he went to the lord for his strength but he, because he said i am out of control of this situation but lord i could only come to you because i know who you are i know the strength and the power that you hold and he went to his knees and he worshiped him it's just really funny to me it's just really comedic because us as Christians, we get really geeked up over the power and the pizzazz and the strength of God. But when it comes to our weakness, we forget his principles. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all, when it, when it boils down to our weakness, we forget his principles. So we, we all hyped up about the power of God. Once the breakup happens, once I fail the test. Once I don't get the job, once I'm no longer friends with this person, once I can in a car crash, once I go into debt, I completely forget where I should be drawing my strength from and who I should run to. Because we know in our weakness, when we decrease, he increases because in our weakness, he is able to show perfect power. Because when we are weak, he is able to be God. He is able to perform the miracle. He is able to restore you, sustain you. When you are weak, he is saying, I am God. Because you are weak, I am strong. Because you are weak, you are giving me the platform. You are giving me the exposure to show you who I am. So delight in your weakness. That's what 2 Corinthians says. Delight in your weakness because God gets to be God. <laughs> hey, my mic. When you delight in your weakness, God gets to be God. And that deserves all the praise. So why do we forget these principles whenever we're weak? Like how I said, we just run to different things. We need to be self-disciplined in this area. Simple. Imagine how things would be so different for us if we ran a God in times of weakness, instead of running to other things, instead of calling your friends right away, why didn't you pray about it? Oh, I know some of you guys convicted. I'd be doing this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all. There are some situations I've been in to where I will call Annika right away. I will call my friend Yay right away, my friend Clarissa right away. And I, I won't go pray about it. I won't go to God. And it's just kind of like, what, you know, what am I doing? It's like, because I'm in a place of weakness, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm out of control. I'm running frantic. But I need to have that thought pinned in my freaking mind that whenever I'm weak, I need to run to the Lord. Because that's where I draw my strength. He is the water to the well. Right? So um, that that's one thing is 
Whenever you are weak, run to the place that you know will give you strength. The place that is your strength. Because when you're just running to all these other places trying to grab strength and grab uh, reassurance and restoration from all these temporary people and things who are sinful just as you are, it is not going to fulfill you. It's not going to sustain you. It's actually going to delay your blessing of the strength that God is going to put over your situation. Your blessing is being delayed by you going and trying to find things through other people and different things. When in all actuality, when you are confronted with your weakness, you need to bow down, worship, and praise God. That's exactly what Job did. And we see in Job, you know, throughout the rest of the story, um, you know, it gets kind of worse <laughs> and it's it, it's a long time. It's not just like, okay, one day really sucks and the next I'm, I'm back in it. We, we talked about patience um, with the story of... Uh, of Abram and Sarai, like how nothing happens right after the promise, right? How God says a word and you need to stay faithful to that. Remember who God is. And that's what Job did. He knew who God was. He says, I, I, you know, I didn't do nothing wrong. Like, I just know God going to be God. I know who God is. I know God just want to do this for no reason. And then we see how the Lord speaks to him. And then how the Lord restores him twice as much, like literally doubled everything that he had before. Who would have known from that story? Uh, I think some of you guys might be confused by the title. <laughs> I gave this episode leg day. Like what? That makes no sense. Uh, the The title of this podcast was actually like a 3 a.m. thought I had about like three months ago um, in the middle of the night. And this was before I was, um, wait, no, I, I had my podcast, pa- I had my podcast out before then, but, um, yeah, this is when, you know, I was just kind of coming up with stuff and in the middle of the night, this one just hit me. I kid you not y'all. I was like sleeping and woke up with this. So God wanted me to talk about this. Um, today is obviously the day, but as so I called it leg day. I see things in analogies. I'm very literal. I uh, God kind of puts literal pictures and ideas in my mind and just kind of shows me things through there. And I work out. I work out a lot. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you know, a girl, a little muscular, you know, I just, <laughs> y'all, last week or before I was sick, so a week and a half ago, I went to the gym. Pilates really been been working because I've been lifting for a year, but Pilates is really kicking me like in shape, shape, like giving me a true definition. I was doing like tricep pull downs. I was looking in the mirror and I got like a hoof on my on my shoulder slash bicep now. And I'm like, oh, I'm the strong. So I go to the gym. Um, I love the gym. I think it's an amazing outlet. Um, if if you choose for it to be, um. And I've been going to the gym for about a year and a half uh, now consistently. Um, It's been amazing. God has been transforming uh, my temple through it. Um, So I understand gym terminology a lot. I go a lot. It's a main hobby of mine. So um, yeah, go to the gym a lot. So God gave me this 3 a.m. idea to call this podcast episode leg day because leg day is my hardest day. Leg day is the day that I push really heavy and I lift really heavy. And uh, it's it's one of those days to where it hurts the whole time I'm doing it. But after I feel amazing, you know, and know that sore feeling you get after you work out and you're like, oh, because I'm sore, I just know it's working. I'm building muscle, you know, and that's exactly how I see finding strength in times of weakness because in the midst of your weakness it sucks it hurts but at the end of it it just makes you stronger does this sound corny now that I'm saying it out loud (laughs) I hope it just doesn't sound corny like this whole leg day analogy thing now that I'm saying it out loud I'm like but uh yeah so in my leg day I am pushing heavy weight it sucks it hurts it's heavy. But after, oh, do I feel amazing. And is it worth 
what I just put myself through, 110%, right? It's like whenever, I mean, the whole reason why you go to the gym isn't because you're already strong in the first place. No one has ever started working out already strong, right? I mean, there's people who go to the gym now to maintain their strength, but when you go to the gym for the first time, you're not going because you're already strong, It's because you need to build strength. And this is what God wants to reveal about our weakness. And how, like like how I said, our weakness can be used as a platform for him to show his strength. But so when, you know, weakness keeps coming up, we know how to handle it. And ultimately, you know how I said, like, anxiety used to be weaponized against me. And now anxiety is used as a tool to give God glory, like whenever I I start to feel anxious or whenever I start to feel uh, or tempted with anxiety, I then give God the glory so he could increase in my decreased position, right? So whenever you kind of go and do the same thing, so say you're consistent at the gym. So I do leg day, I have two leg days a week. The more you start doing leg day, when you're eating the right foods, you're getting in your protein and you're doing the right exercises, even though those exercises hurt and you're pushing through and you're lifting heavy weight, the more you do it week after week, day after day, it starts to become easier. It doesn't mean that it's less heavy, but you could take on more weight now because you know what that weight feels like and you know how to push through it. So weakness is also a learning lesson. So weakness can be a weapon. It could be a tool for God to show who he is. And it could also be a lesson. You know, God taking you through the same thing to show you where you should be drawing your strength from. And this is why people, there's people who go to the gym once a month <laughs> or, a few time, or a few times a month. And they don't progress with their health because they're not consistently confronting their weakness. Does this make sense? Why do you think bodybuilders have the physique that they have? It's because they go consistently. It's because they go day after day, time after time, and take their rest days. That's important, but we're not talking about that today. There's a consistency with confronting your weakness so you can learn the lesson and give a platform For God to exemplify his strength. Because you're walking in the gym weak. What makes you strong? Because quite honestly, anyone who goes to the gym will tell you that they don't want to be doing half of the stuff that they're doing. Like, really. What it is is that little tiny voice in the back of your head that's saying, keep going. One more. You could go five pounds heavier. That same voice is God. I'm not saying literally, but like, you know what I mean? Like, like that, that thing that whatever your weakness is, that thing in the back of your head that's telling you keep pushing five more. You got it. That's God. And that's why I thought a leg day. Because I'd be pushing some weight and you think I want to do that? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. But I know where I draw my strength from. I know that each extension is going to make me stronger. I know that's going to be worth the pain. I know that I got a delight in my weakness. So that's why I call this leg day. It's kind of an an analogy to working out, but I draw my strength from Jesus. Mm -mm. And also the gym isn't just a physical thing. It's a mental thing. I didn't, I didn't mean to come on here and be like a gym freak talking about the, about the gym, but To become stronger physically is a choice. Same thing when it comes to your spirituality. When it comes comes to your emotional and mental health. If you want to become stronger in it, it's a mental choice. Not just like a, okay, body, do it. Your, Your mind has to be in agreement with what you're doing. Your mind has to be in agreement to build strength. Because... Consistency is what matters the most. When you go to the gym, you know, 
a person who goes there only once every two weeks, you're not going to see much progression. But if someone goes five, six days a week for five, six months or more, you're going to see definition. You're going to see muscle start to build. They walked in weak and now they're coming out with muscles. You think that only happens whenever you walk into a gym once in a while? And you think that happens with them waking up in the morning like, oh, like, uh, I don't feel like going to the gym today. And like I said, this isn't about like going to the gym. This is the analogy. It's about making the decision saying, I want to become stronger. I want to become healthier. Whatever your weakness is. Ever you're ignorant to in that because oh don't hate me you're ignorant to your weakness I don't know what it is some of y'all are ignorant to the weak part that is in you and you keep walk this is your gym you keep walking away from it like I don't want to go to the gym I don't want to deal with this lust I don't want to deal with my laziness I don't want to deal with my anger issues. I don't want to deal with my mommy issues. I don't want to deal with my sibling issues. I don't want to deal with my authority issues. I don't want to deal with my self-harm issues. When that is something you should actually be confronting, like how I said, we need to confront our weakness before it confronts us. Because it's going to bite you back. So whatever it is that you're avoiding, This is the time to not be ignorant towards it and allow God to show his strength in whatever your situation is, whatever your weakness is to show his strength. The first step you need to do though is say yes to it. Cause I could tell you guys all this, like, look, and this kind of goes down to Nick grit of it. Every episode that comes out, everything that comes out of my mouth is to pour into you guys so you guys can build your spirituality, so you can build your emotional, mental health, whatever it may be. Everything that flows out of my mouth is to help you, is to guide you. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to build you. He wants to lift you up, exalt you, right? But none of it would be important if you say no to it. If you're not actually soaking in the things that I'm saying to you. So every episode is giving strength to you, right? But I mean, is it really giving strength if you're saying no to it? You could, you could put like a, like a glass of water in front of you. But just because it's in front of you doesn't mean you're drinking it. That you're being hydrated. So it all starts with the decision is do I want to confront this? Am I willing to confront this? Do I need to? Which you need to, but you got to make that decision and it it, it takes a lot of self-discipline, you you know? No matter what area it is, like I said, everyone got multiple weaknesses. They're all different, but there's been some things that I walked up to to where I was like, no, (laughs) I don't even want to touch this right now. No, because it upsets me. It's going to hold me back. I'm just, no, I'm scared. Walks away from it. When that's the one thing I should have walked up to and been like, yeah, I could take this on. Because I got someone on my side who can. I got someone on my side that already beat that for me. I got someone who died on the cross for my addiction. I got someone who died on the cross for my anxiety. I got someone who died on the cross for my depression. I got someone who died on the cross for my abandonment issues, for being a victim of abuse. I got someone who died on the cross for that. So now whenever I'm confronted with weakness, I know who to bring with me. So what's your decision today? Are you wanting to confront your weakness? Are you going to allow God to increase in a situation that you have no control over? That you are completely weakened. What are you going to do? Because I'm not going to sit here and convince you. Because I I think a lot of um, teachers, people will try to counsel and advise 
a lot of people when they haven't even made a decision. So I want to give you the opportunity to make a decision. Are you going to allow God to come into your life today? And this, this comes into all aspects. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about Jesus. Like, sorry, this is like a come to the altar type speech, but I, de- I didn't expect doing this, but I just feel it. Maybe this is the time where you want to accept Jesus into your life. Maybe you felt weak your whole life and you're just realizing that God wants to give you strength. That God is going to give you the strength. It is promised. That he gives that we are heirs. Like, do you understand? Like, we are his children. We are heirs of what he has. Strength, power, happiness, joy, kindness, peace. We are heirs of that. We inherit that because we are his children. Do you want to be his child? Do you want to be in his arms today? Do you want him to be your strength? Your friend? your father, your king, your spouse, whatever it may be. I just invite you right now. If if this is someone, I know it, I feel it. If you're wanting to make this decision today to accept the Lord, the Lord into your life, um, we're just going to pray real quick. And then we'll get back into what we were talking about. But um, let's just pray. If this is you, I I feel like this is someone out there. I really feel it. And I'll be praying for you outside of this. So um, let's just bow our heads. And to those, if this doesn't apply for you, let's just pray for those who are wanting to be in relationship with Jesus. So let's pray. Lord, we just come to you. And to the other person who's uh, praying right now, who's wanting to accept Jesus, just repeat after me, Lord. I invite you into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God. Lord, I need you to be my strength. I am inviting you to be my strength. Lord, I'm putting it in myself to decrease so you can increase. I believe in your goodness. I know you love me. And I love you. Show me who you are. I'm in a place of willingness to know you. Thank you, Jesus, for always being with me. I love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Someone just got saved. Let's just round of applause. One person. I don't even care if it's just one. That's that's a celebration. Uh Sorry, so off topic. I just felt that. I didn't even plan that. I just, I don't know. Sometimes, y'all, whenever I'm in this, uh, in this, I just, I just know I need to, I need to say something, you know? I don't know. Some things, sometimes things just happen whenever I'm sitting here. God just kind of is like, nope, someone, someone's going to get saved. Say it. I'm like, okay. So, um, praise God. If that was you who got saved, um, and if that wasn't you pray for this person, <laughs> um, and just take this time to pray for other people in your life who need strength, who are really weak right now. And I sympathize with you guys because I'm like, how I said, I'm in the same boat as y'all. I've been in times of weakness. I, I, I'm still going to be in times of weakness. I'm human, you know, but I think a lot of the time when we're in times of weakness, we, we fail to see the end of it. It's hard to have faith. We have little faith. And because our weakness is blurs our vision and it is full of darkness and it's you're just lost and you feel like you have no control. It's it's like sometimes we choose not to have faith because we don't know the outcome. And God wants to encourage us to do the opposite of that. That actually, whenever we're weak, that we should increase our faith and increase our hope that he's going to do something good. Because that's who he is. You know? Mm -mm. And like how I said, I think that's why I know I could take on any giant that's in front of me now. Not because I can, 
but because God can. Because I know that it's not my strength, that it's God's. That every giant will fall because I didn't die on the cross. I didn't already win the battle. It was God who did. And he's the one who stands with me. So every giant must fall. Must. It has to. Because he already won. And I think of David and Goliath when I think of like a giant, when I face a giant. What, what, like I said, whatever this may be, it's a, it's a, it's a broad, it's a broad message today. Whatever your giant may be. I just want to read you guys the story of David real quick. And then I'll close out with this. I don't know how long I've been going. It might be a little too long. The The podcast has been kind of going long recently. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, but I'm going to be reading 1 Samuel uh, 17, 42 uh, through 50. He looked David over and saw that he was little, more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. So this is, this is Goliath, the Philistine, looking at David. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and all the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you with the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and to the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Ugh, so powerful. Sorry, I got goosebumps. All those gathered here will know uh, that it is not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle, lying to meet him, reaching into his bag, taking out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone st- sank <laughs> into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. You think it was that stone that killed Goliath? (laughs) You think it was the stone that killed him? Like, do you see how David confronted his giant? (laughs) Like, what? David confronted his giant by saying, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied huh what that just give me hype just like like hearing him say that you got a sword you got a knife <laughs> like you got divorce papers you got all these words you got open threats you you doing all this but guess who on my side oh so hard like what so tough and you think the stone is what killed him. That was not David's strength. It was David's weakness that allowed God to be strong. It wasn't that stone that killed Goliath. It was the power of the one who gave that stone. It, it, was, it was the power behind it, which was God. David drew his strength from God. Because David knew by on his own, he was weak. He said, but the Lord stands with me, the Lord Almighty. How many of us don't say that in our times of weakness? Imagine how differently our lives would be if we were to confront our weakness with authority saying, I know who's with me. And you can't tear me down. No, babe. <laughs> Work through your weakness, knowing that it is going to make you strong. Your weakness will make you strong, let me promise you. Trust in the Lord, y'all. We know how he operates. So why, whenever we get, like, stuck up, we just, like, completely forget who he is? Don't get caught up 
in your weakness and what's dangling in front of your face. God wants to support you. He wants to give you strength. He wants to speak life into you. He wants to show you his power. So let's take that with us these next two weeks. What weakness do I need to confront? What giant do I need to face and say, I got the Lord Almighty on my side. Imagine how different your life would be. I challenge you guys this week. Um, I got to close out because I feel like I've gone way over time. I, I just feel it. I feel like I started at like, I feel like I started early and I was kind of late and I got to go to worship night. So um, I, I'm so blessed that you guys uh, are listening to this message. Each and every single one of you. I'm praying for each and every single one of you. Um, uh, I actually started kind of funny. Yeah, I kind of started uh, a Google Forms to where you guys can drop your prayer requests. I tried doing it on Instagram and it was just like, Ugh. so in the link tree and also on the bottom of this video, um, there will be link tree in my Instagram, YouTube, bottom of the video. Um, you could drop prayer requests and also there's going to be a form if you have gotten saved um, through any of my episodes um if the lord was just speaking to you through me uh there's also um a survey form thing that says i got saved and um where you just basically put your name what you need prayer for so i can be praying for you so um my mentors and friends could be praying for you guys as well um so yeah if you guys have any prayer requests um or just any questions inquiries whatever it may be um that's all in my leak tree i just try to put everything in one place so you guys can just kind of like nitpick it from there but um yeah i'm so blessed that all of you guys uh came and listened to what god had to say i prayed that you know he transformed your guys's lives with this because i just felt like this was such a powerful message and um just thank you god for being here and um speaking to those on the other side of the screen uh thank you guys for always supporting me um exalting me to a higher place with god and believing in me and um i really love each and every single one of you even though uh I don't know the majority of you, but it feels like the majority of you guys know me. Um, I love you guys endlessly. I'm praying for you. I love you guys so, so much. Have a blessed next uh, two days, two days, next two weeks. Um, I will see you guys super, super soon. And yeah, I'm praying for you. Love you guys. Bye.